Birds flying high, you know how I feel. This is Jeremy Tusmer with SGTV. Most of the artists in our newest exhibition were born between about 1875 and 1910. All of them were women. What did that mean back then? Other than the obvious, it meant that they had a decent shot at a college education, but no right to vote. How did the art world treat them? At best, these women found indifference. At worst, open hostility. Why train a woman to make art? Their place was in the home. Plus, art making could involve moral peril. Just imagine the new drawing class. Whatever would the weaker sex do? Paint flowers, I guess. Just think of what Georgia O'Keeffe or Grace Vollmer or Henrietta Shore did with that idea. Fortunately, these women pushed ahead. They declared their right to be artists. Moreover, they declared their right to be modern artists, to break from convention, to push boundaries, to lead the avant-garde. Discussing these women as individuals is beyond the scope of my little story today. Suffice it to say, you may be as amazed as I was by what these women did, how they lived, and how they worked. One artist had purple hair in the 1930s. Another traveled to Samoa by herself in 1928 and had the leg tattoos to prove it. Another artist came west on the train, stopping off in Arizona to live and paint with the Hopi for a month. We've written wall tests for each artist. You'll have to come in and read their stories in full. This exhibition does have a particularly great selection of women modernists from the Santa Barbara area. Among these, Lila Harkoff, Grace Vollmer, Marge Dunlap, and Beatrice Wood, the mama of Dada. I would just conclude with an observation and a few words of thanks. When the gallery was still new to town, owner Frank Goss met Bill and Sandy Nicholson, a pair of patrons whose collection focused entirely on women. That had a tonic effect. So of the collecting habits of a woman we refer to tongue-in-cheek as Mrs. Nobody. Today, the gallery represents 14 artists of whom nine are women. We didn't set out for gender parity, it just happened. So why do a show like the Declarations of Independence? Why focus on gender? I had a nice woman ask me that while we were installing. I was forced to tell her that the most expensive woman artist had sold for less than a third of the most expensive male artist. That's 33 cents on the dollar. There were perhaps other stories to tell her, but that story tells enough. The Declarations of Independence will be on view through June 28th. Come see it.